name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. As we come here today, we welcome people from across the Diocese of Exeter who will be joining us today, and from further afield, wherever you are, welcome to the parish of St Bartholomew and St Mark, here in sunny Mile House and sunny Ford. It's a glorious day here in Plymouth. Um, I'm sure later on there'll be the lovely wafting of barbecue smoke to really make us feel uh, in a holiday mood. We gather though in the, in the midst of our beautiful world to place this time before God our Father, to offer our lives to him, that we may profit from his presence in our lives. We are aware that so often we fall away from our Heavenly Father when through our thoughts, words and actions we find ourselves falling into sin. Gathering in the name of our loving Saviour, let us first acknowledge our failure. Lord, you are born from the Virgin Mary for the salvation of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you died on the cross to heal the wounds of sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you rose from the dead to open for us the gates of heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so let us pray. O God, who strengthened those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, and in following your commands, we may, we may please you with our resolve and our deeds. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off the tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it every kind of bird will live, in the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree, and I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, 
to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. Lord, Lord it, is it is good, good to, to give, give thanks, thanks to you. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, Lord it, it is, is good, good to, to give thanks, thanks to you. In old age, they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap, showing that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Lord, Lord it, it is, is good, good to, to give, give thanks, thanks to you. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. <coughs> so whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. <coughs> this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The seed is the word of God, Christ is the soul. All who come to him will live forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, According to Mark, glory to you, O Lord. Such a large crowd gathered around Jesus that he got into a boat and began to teach to them, using many parables. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes to in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we, will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it sprouts up, and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such par parables, he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once, Reader's Digest told the story about a company who mailed out some special advertising postcards with a mustard seed glued onto them, and a caption that went something like this. If you have faith as small as this mustard seed in our product, you are guaranteed to get excellent results and be totally satisfied. Signed, the management. A 
few months later, one recipient of this promotional piece wrote back to the company and said, You'll be very interested to know that I planted the mustard seed you sent with your advertising card, and it has grown into a very healthy bush, producing wonderful tomatoes. <laughs> there is a children's song, a nursery rhyme, that came to my mind as I was reading today's gospel. Oats and beans and barley grow, oats and beans and barley grow. Not you nor I nor anyone know how oats and beans and barley grow. First the farmer sows the seed, then he stands and takes his ease, stamps his feet and claps his hand and turns around to view the land. <laughs> there is a very real sense in which growing the church is more like an entrepreneur trying to build a business to attract a niche market. Like any entrepreneur, you take a risk on something without ever really knowing whether it's going to work. We are all like entrepreneurs, always improvising and adapting. We are not always sure what's working or not working. Humans don't have a clue what strategies will help the church thrive. On our own, we are all in over our heads, but we need to keep trying. God has his plan, and we humans often seem to get in the way. Perhaps that is a lesson from the farmer who does nothing except scatter seed. Somehow, we need to keep out of God's way or we end up being in over our heads. At least we need to, rec to understand that our efforts may not bear fruit in a time scale that we recognize. In one of the parables from our gospel lesson, Jesus talks about a farmer who simply scatters seed. He makes a point to say that the seed grows by itself, while the farmer doesn't know how it happens. I doubt that most farmers only plant seeds and never do anything more to tend to the crop. But for the purpose of this parable, this particular farmer is clueless and has very little to do with the fact that the seed bears fruit. He's in way over his head. Jesus tells this parable to illustrate what the kingdom of God is like, the realm of God's peace and freedom and justice. Despite the skepticism of many of his enemies, Jesus claimed that this realm was already a reality through him. Many of them looked around and saw a lack of peace and freedom and justice, and they rejected Jesus' message. In fact, some of them thought he was either crazy or demon-possessed, or maybe both. I have to think that maybe Jesus' own disciples saw that same lack of peace and freedom and justice, and may have had those doubts themselves. I think that's why Jesus told the disciples this parable. He was reminding them that when it comes to understanding how God's kingdom works, we're all in over our heads. We're clueless. The realm of peace and freedom and justice that Jesus was talking about is something that only God can create. Some might, may find ways that are more or less effective at bringing people in, but from the biblical standpoint, the only source of any lasting growth is God. So what does this mean? Do we just sit back and wait and pray that God will do something? Well, in the first place, I think it means that we have to begin by recognizing the simple fact that we are in a troubling position. We are dealing with matters that, that are beyond our understanding and abilities. But I think it also means that we have to recognize that it's our job to persevere in the planting and tending of the gospel seeds of 
mercy and kindness and love. And we keep on planting seeds, even when we don't seem to see many results. Because this is beyond us, beyond our control. We have to recognize that we may never know what comes from the seeds we plant. But because they are gospel seeds, they will bear fruit in their own way and in their own time. I think this also means we can't judge by outward appearances. By outward appearances, Samuel should have chosen Eliam, Jesse's oldest son, instead of David, the youngest. By outward appearances, the people in the church at Corinth probably should never have followed the Apostle Paul. If church tradition can be trusted, he wasn't much to look at, and even less of a public speaker. By outward appearances, churches under a hundred members may seem irrelevant compared to those with thousands of members. But over and over and over again, the scriptures remind us that we simply cannot judge by appearances. That's especially true when it comes to what God is doing in this world. All of this means that we have to operate based on faith. Imagine that. Operating on the basis of faith in the church. But there's faith. And then there's faith. And it seems that Jesus is calling us to approach our task with a faith that cannot know the outcome. At least the immediate outcome of what we do. Investing our lives in the church that seeks to wear, bear witness to God's realm of peace and freedom and justice in this world requires us to step out in faith that what we are doing is the right thing and will eventually bear fruit, even if we may not see it. It means persevering in kindness and love, to look beyond appearances. It means recognising we're in over our heads, but we can trust that God is working in and through us constantly. God knows how he will bring his kingdom to pass. Only God knows. We have to trust him, each in our own small or great endeavours, that if we are faithful, he will bring his work to fruition. We may not see it. We probably won't see it. But God has, God does, and God will bring his plans to fruition. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As the people of God scattered throughout the world, let us declare the faith which we hold together as one as I ask you these questions. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary? He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? I do. Our faith gives us confidence to call God upon God our Father. And we pray for those throughout our world facing the pandemic still amongst us. For those who make decisions over our future, for the decisions made by our government, for the work of our scientists and those who share the vaccine and medical relief amongst us. We pray for all in our health services, social service and care services, for all who are attending the needs of others. We pray for their well-being, that they may find rest, peace and refreshment. We pray, pray for those places throughout our world where health care and medical resources are scarce, for those countries facing difficult decisions and facing a lack of vaccine. We pray for the work of the G7, for those who have gathered in this land to discuss the future of our world and from there for governments around our world coming together. We pray for our own communities in which we live, for this city here in Plymouth, for Mile House Board, for the places in which we live, for our neighbours, our friends, all whom we share our daily lives with. We pray for all we know who are struggling, for those who are ill, those who are injured, for all who are afraid and bereaved, and for those who are alone. We offer to God all on our parish sick lists, those who speak to us and say, please pray for me. May they experience the healing love of Christ and find comfort and hope. And we offer to God those who have departed this life, that they may be drawn into his presence through the mercy and love of our Saviour Jesus Christ, that they may come to experience paradise and come to the fruition that Christ has for us all. We pray for all those whom we love, but yet see no more. And offering them to God our Father, we have confidence to pray for ourselves that when our time comes, through mercy and forgiveness, we may come to dwell in paradise. And so we gather our prayers with our brothers and sisters in every place and offer our own needs and concerns to God our Father. Confident that when we pray in the name of our Saviour, that the presence of the Holy Spirit will lift us up. We offer our own needs now in his closer presence. Hear us, Lord, as we raise up our prayers to in faith. Read our hearts well and answer these prayers in ways we know and in ways we cannot understand. We call upon you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were baptised into one body. Let us then pursue everything that makes for peace and builds up our life together. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you.
Pray, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. O God, when the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right, our duty and our, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. But though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones, dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Bartholomew, Mark, and Mary of the Cross, and with all the saints, on whose constant prayer in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servants Jonathan, Robert, Nick, our bishops, your clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. 
through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. In the presence of Christ, let us call upon our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
So let us pray. And this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful to you. So may it bring about unity in your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before you enjoy the rest of the weekend, um, uh, take care in the sunshine. Just like to thank uh, our lay reader, George Davis, for preaching for us today here at, at St. Bartholomew's Mile House. Just get that one right. Um, really good for you if you're, when you, if you're joining us from Costa Diocese or elsewhere. Um, please keep Bishop Nick in your prayers at the moment. He's not too well uh, and uh, we wish him a speedy recovery. Time to go out into the world, as I've just said earlier on. Uh, it's a sunny weekend. Um, I'm sure everyone's going to be uh, out in their gardens this afternoon, marvelling at the size of the, the vegetation and the plants that have started from a mere small seed, a bit like our lawn outside. Lots of small seeds, but when you come out here next week, thanks to a generous gift from one of the members of the congregation, the lawn outside will be beautifully manicured and flat. Uh, there we go. Nature's gone balmy at the moment, hasn't it? Absolutely balmy. Uh, this morning, at about quarter to, well, just before nine o'clock, uh, we were looking out the kitchen window, and there was a fox in our garden, the size of a Labrador, here in the middle of our city. Uh, our pet rabbits weren't so keen on the sight of that, I have to say. <laughs> Nature has bloomed in just about every way. And that, of course, as George was talking about, includes God's plan, which is for you as well, that you may continue to grow and come to the fruition that he wants for you. That's where we're going, aren't we, George? God is working his plan out. I wonder how you will blossom over the next few days to come. Would you stand, please? The Lord be with you, and also with you. May Christ grant you holiness to follow him in faith, hope, and love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. The angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. We beseech you, O Lord, pour your grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion, we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. 